everyone i am filming this video oh dear i'm filming this video a lot later than i originally intended to i had actually hoped to film this um literally like a week after uh, the baby was born but i did not get a chance i um have obviously been very busy um i will be feeding her throughout this video it just so happened that we've just got home from doing our like last pre-christmas food shop and she needs feeding so if that's something that's going to bother you then this video is probably not for you baby needs to be fed and this is the one chance i've got before christmas <laughs> that's, this is the one chance i've got before christmas to film this video so um yeah if you're not going to be comfortable with me feeding her then this won't be the video for you so for those who don't follow me on other social media we had our baby by elective c-section on the 25th of november 2021 uh, and her name is darcy matilda prendergast um, she weighed eight pounds 11 ounces um, not sure how long she was they didn't officially measure her at birth um, and she was born at 11 minutes past nine in the morning and I thought that I would just give you a quick rundown of my like birth experience, um, tell you how it went and then basically just have a little montage of clips of her first month of life at the end um, because I cannot believe it's been a month already, it's been a crazy, wonderful, hard um, month uh, but I wanted to share it with you so yeah so we so we actually knew um darcy's birthday for the majority of the pregnancy um i knew from very early on that i was going to have to have a c-section um because of my crohn's disease sorry i've had to prop us up with another cushion it's i normally lay back a lot more to feed her but obviously that's not gonna be um conducive to filming a video anyway so I knew from quite early on that I was going to have a c-section not everyone with Crohn's or colitis will have to have one or be advised to have one at the end of the day you can attempt to give birth however you want to um so even though I was strongly advised to have a c-section I should I could have gone ahead and um gone for a normal delivery if I wanted to um but I took the advice of the healthcare professionals around me and I opted to have the elective c-section and normally they don't book a date for you until you're basically at the end of your pregnancy but i was really lucky and on the day that they um sort of confirmed that i would need to have one or that i should have one um i basically said to the consultant that i was speaking to um you know i have medical anxiety and health anxiety and i feel like i'm gonna need a decent amount of time to prepare myself for this and so they went ahead and booked it for me that day uh, so I knew from I think about 20 or 21 weeks pregnant the day that I was going to have Darcy and um, that made it a lot easier for me I think I am by nature a planner so I appreciated being able to plan things and like I say mentally prepare myself for the c-section because it's a big thing it's a major surgery um, and for me, I just felt like I couldn't have a date just sprung on me. Um, if we ever have another baby, I might not have the luxury of knowing the date well in advance again, but I was glad that I did this time at least. Funnily enough, um, the date that they gave me, I didn't. sometimes you get to choose your date. I didn't get to choose, they just booked it for me. Um, but the date that they booked was actually the day that I like officially found out I was pregnant for the first time the year before. So 25th of November 2020, I, um, like, a f sorry if you can hear Will's downstairs, uh, but yeah, I found out I was pregnant, like, officially for the first time, and unfortunately we did go on to lose that pregnancy, but that was on 25th of November 2020, um, and she was born exactly a year later on the 25th of November 2021, so it was just funny how that worked out. So anyway, prior to having the C-section, um, you have at least one like pre-op appointment or appointment with the anaesthetist. So I had all of that done. 
COVID swabs, blood tests, all that sort of thing before the surgery. And then for two days before the C-section, we were advised to isolate. So we had COVID tests done um, and then we had to isolate for two days before going into the hospital um, just to make sure that we didn't come into contact with COVID between our tests being done and going in. Um, but having said that, they did COVID test us again when we got there on the day. Um, we had to be there on the morning of for half past seven in the morning. And funnily enough, I actually slept the night before and I'm really glad I did because the first couple of days of Darcy's life, I didn't sleep at all. Um, I didn't sleep at night. I didn't sleep during the day. I think it, in the end it was about three days where I didn't sleep. Um, so I'm so glad that by some miracle I was able to sleep the night before the C-section. Um, but we got up, got ready and went in. My hospital bags had been packed since I was about 30 weeks. So thankfully I didn't have to worry about any of that. Um, and yeah, we went into the hospital um, and I was terrified. I can't remember if I spoke about this much like in the last vlog that I uploaded before I had her. But I was absolutely petrified of the C-section. Like, I don't think I've ever been so scared of anything before in my life. Um, obviously, when you think C-section, it's exciting because you get to meet your baby. You're having your baby, which is very exciting. But at the same time, it is a major surgery. You're being cut open. Um, and there are lots of things that can go wrong. And they do tell you, like, some of the things that can go wrong. So it it is a bit scary and I just had it in my head that something awful was going to happen to me um and yeah I, I had got myself into quite a state about it um in the week leading up to the section um and when we got there on the day there were three women on the list having planned c-sections that day and the midwife could obviously tell straight away that I was not um doing very well because she basically came straight up to me and was like are you okay <laughs> and I was like no <laughs> but I'm rushing forward a bit um obviously I don't know what it will be like at other hospitals but ours were really efficient um we got there there were three beds um set up in this room we each had a bed um and on each bed there was a little tray with like a nappy and hospital bands and everything for the baby and they told us to get out a hat and put a hat in there and that would be taken down to theatre with us. We filled out all our paperwork, we were given hospital gowns, we had our Covid swabs done again, um, some observations done, they checked the baby's heartbeats to make sure they were all okay and that was all done within like the first half an hour of being in the room. Um, and the first C-section was set to start at like 9am and I was keeping my fingers crossed that I was first on the list because like I said I was in a bit of a state already um, and unfortunately I wasn't first on the list but <laughs> the midwife like I said could see that I was in a bit of a state and because I have a mild latex allergy that actually meant that I could be bumped to the top of the list so um, I'm not sure why it happens like that, but it does. The one I've had other procedures before, I've gone down first because of having a latex allergy. Um, I guess it's because they can keep the whole theatre completely latex free for the first person and there won't be any like cross contamination. I, d I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I ended up going first and the real reason was because I was in such a state. I heard the midwife talking to one of the doctors saying that I was very anxious and, and quite upset so I, I know that that was the real reason that I was bumped to the top of the list but because I have this mild latex allergy that was sort of their justification for it um but anyway so just to give you an idea of how fast it was I texted my mum at 8 45 saying I'm first on the list I'm going down first and Darcy was born at 11 minutes past nine so she was born 26 minutes after I texted my mum saying that I was going down first um, and obviously when I texted my mum I was still like on the ward waiting to go um, but they basically like I was all gowned up they got Will into scrubs um, and they take you into theatre um, and you have everything done in theatre so when they took me down I didn't even have a cannula or anything um, they just sat me straight on the bed 
um, and the anaesthetist did my cannula for me and that was done really quickly and painlessly because anaesthetists know what they're doing. They do this all day long and they are pros at finding like uh, veins in people who have difficult veins. I have tiny, ridiculous little veins that do not like cannulas. So um, I was glad that the anaesthetist did that for me um, and it was all done quickly. And then um, straight after the cannula was done, they did the spinal. Um, you just, you sort of have to hunch over your bump. So you sit on the edge of the table and like hunch over your bump. Um, and they inject like a numbing, like a local anaesthetic in first. Then they do the spinal and bless him, Will was trying to make me feel better. So he like told a joke while they were doing the spinal and I laughed and the anaesthetist was like, no moving. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna paralyze myself because I laughed at someone's joke. I was a bit worried but thankfully it was fine um and honestly like the spinal wasn't like it wasn't massively pleasant but it also wasn't bad at all and that was one of the things i was most worried about um it wasn't the same as an epidural it, it was a spinal anesthetic um so it was different to an epidural but um so i can't like comment on what an epidural would be like but for me the spinal was really not so bad, which I was so glad about. Um, and for me, it started working almost instantly. So as soon as you have it done, they then lay you down straight away so that you don't like topple off the table or whatever. And I think if you're worried or you're uncomfortable, you can also have it administered whilst you're laying down. Um, but I was sat up. They immediately laid me down and started getting like the curtain and everything all set up for the surgery. And there were lots of people in the room, but it felt very calm and organized um and the anaesthetist was amazing she talked to me the whole time really put me at ease they'd all introduced themselves to me by name so that was really nice so they don't start doing anything else to you like they don't put a catheter in or anything um until you are completely numb um just to make sure you can't feel anything and that you're not going to be uncomfortable so they have like a cold spray and they spray it all up and down your body to see if you can feel the temperature um, because uh, with nerves you're like the way you feel temperature and the way you feel pain is the same apparently so if you can't feel the freezing cold spray you can't feel any pain either so they sprayed this cold spray all up and down my body to make sure I was numb and I was so then the midwife administered the or fitted the catheter and um, you do have to have a, have a catheter if you have a spinal because you won't be able to go to the toilet um so I had that done obviously didn't feel it um and it was such a strange sensation because I could feel that they were moving my legs around because they they ask for your consent before they do anything and they tell you what you do what they're doing um so they said to me like we're just going to move your legs while we do this and everything and I could feel my legs being moved but it felt like they didn't belong to me it felt like my legs were flat on the table but I could see them picking up and moving my legs it was so weird and it was the same after the c-section as well I could see them moving my legs around to get me from the operating table like onto the bed but it just felt like my legs were made out of like play-doh it was the weirdest thing weirdest thing um but anyway after that was done and they were happy that i was like completely numb i heard the surgeon say to the anaesthetist are we okay to start and she said yes and then she said she asked me if I wanted to have any music playing and my mind kind of went blank. So Will said, oh, what about Taylor Swift? Do you love Taylor Swift? So she put Taylor Swift on for me. And literally two minutes later, Darcy was born, which was just crazy. It happened much, much faster than either of us thought. Have you made me a cup of tea? Yeah. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, so literally two minutes into All Too Well by Taylor Swift, <laughs> uh, Darcy was born. We didn't even get through a whole song. Um, I felt them pushing on my tummy really early on and I knew that they would do they would do that to get the baby out um, and it happened so quickly that the anaesthetist's assistant who was meant to be filming her being born for me actually missed it so I have footage of her um, like being held up and everything and immediately after being born but I don't have the footage of her coming out because it happened so quick that none of them were expecting it all of the staff were like, hang on, like what? She's out already sort of thing. Will didn't even realise they'd started the surgery. So yeah, it happened so fast. Um, but they lowered the curtain and held her up so I could see her. And 
it was just the most amazing moment and she came out crying like screaming and um i'm not surprised because she is full of sass now already um but yeah she screamed um and i was just so relieved like hearing her cry and seeing her and she was so chunky and like yeah it was the most amazing moment ever i couldn't like i couldn't get my head around the fact that she was real like it, it was just it was crazy so then after they're born um they have to do a couple of checks first and will went with her to um like take pictures of her be with her while they were done um she had her vitamin k injection and then they weighed her and she was eight pounds 11 ounces which i couldn't believe she was absolutely ginormous um and at the time i really didn't feel like my bump was that big but i suppose looking back it kind of was um but yeah she was much bigger than any of us were expecting bigger than the scans had predicted as well um i think a week before she'd been predicted at seven pounds eight ounces or something like that so we were expecting her to be around eight pounds the sonographer at the time said to us she'll probably be around eight pounds nope eight pound eleven <laughs> I do feel like with c-section babies though their weight can be slightly inflated because of like excess fluid and things so um she did end up losing 10 ounces in the first couple of days of her life but that could be to do with other things as well which i'll go into afterwards so yeah that was her birth and it was amazing the c-section couldn't have gone any smoother um i was fine throughout the anaesthetist as I said, really kept me calm. Um, after she'd had her checks and been weighed and everything, I had skin to skin with her and then Will cuddled her. Um, and then after I was all like sewn up and sorted out, they moved me into a bed and gave her to me and they took Will back to get changed and everything. And he met us back on the recovery ward. Um, and the whole thing had taken about an hour, if that. In, in fact, I think it was like far less than that. Um, and then in recovery, I was able to feed her for the first time and we stayed there for a couple of hours before being moved to a postnatal ward afterwards. Um, and yeah, the actual like surgery itself all went really well, which was such a relief because I'd been so worried about it. We ended up staying in hospital for two nights um, instead of just the one. I was in quite a lot of pain and having a bit of extra pain relief. Um, like I had um, morphine a couple of times and uh, dihydrocodone because I was in quite a bit of pain um, so I wasn't I was encouraged to stay for an extra night but also we had um, issues with feeding so Darcy had a tongue tie which we managed to privately have um, corrected on day three but um, by like a, a tongue tie practitioner but um, I was having to express and syringe feed her because her latch was so bad and she did quite a bit of damage even in her first feed. I had like blood blisters and stuff um, and on day two I was in quite a state about her feeding because she just screamed. She was clearly starving but like couldn't latch and couldn't feed so I was expressing and syringe feeding her and we spoke to a breastfeeding counsellor who confirmed that she had a tongue tie even though the staff in the hospital had told me she hadn't she did um and like i say we managed to get that fixed on day three um after we had been discharged so the hospital stay after she was born was a little bit stressful um because of the feeding and everything but the actual surgery itself went really well so it, it has been a bit of a journey but it's also been amazing i can't believe we have a baby like it's insane um i can't believe that she's nearly a month old either it's gone so fast um i've basically just been like cocooned in the bedroom for this whole month soaking in like every second of it and um trying to like cuddle her and enjoy it as much as possible but it is hard i'm not gonna say that it, it's not um we've had the tongue tie issues so she dropped a lot of weight at first she's also had prolonged jaundice so we've been back and forth to the hospital having blood tests which is horrible um she's also got um a hemangioma on her head which is a type of birthmark that 
I must admit, like during my pregnancy towards the end, I was actually a bit worried that she was going to have a birthmark that might bother her um, because I have a birthmark above my eye that people don't tend to notice. But when they do notice it, it comes up in conversation and um, I occasionally notice it and think, oh God, I wish I'd got that removed sort of thing. So I did start to worry about her having a birthmark as well. And of course she came out and she has a hemangioma. Um, they're a type of birthmark that grow rapidly for the first like six to 12 months of a baby's life and then they start to shrink and disappear but it can take several years um, so it, it will go eventually I imagine but it is on her head and it is already growing quite rapidly and I find it really upsetting so there have definitely been things that um, have been hard plus you know, being up all night, feeding a baby and everything. And with breastfeeding and you're the only one who can feed them, um, it's hard, but it's also been amazing. And so I just wanted to come on and introduce her to you and share a bit about when she was born. And um, I will pop a montage of clips of her first month of life onto this video now. If you've got any questions about the birth or the C-section or recovery or anything, um, let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this little chatty catch-up vlog and I will see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>